Amen. Brothers and sisters, a little bit late in our class today, and we ask everyone to please bear with us things that were beyond our ability to control, you know, but here we are. The grace of the Lord saw us through, and we're here for this class today. Uh, we are on course 107, Ministry, Discover, Pursue, and Fulfill. This course, if you understand it fully and properly, the honest truth is you will never miss word concerning the New Testament concept of ministry. And so yesterday we began with an overview, and today we go to lesson two, and we're going to be discussing two concepts of ministry in the Old Testament that have been made obsolete. They are outdated. They have no place in the new covenant because Yeshua has nullified their capacity to be part of what his church ought to be involved with. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to receive grace from you, revelation from you. Empower us by your grace. Let your name be glorified even as you feed us with your word. Thank you, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. So two concepts of ministry in the Old Testament, you see them. One of them, Elohim established it. The other one was not established by Elohim at all. And we need to know them. If you know them, it will deliver you. And this is a very good uh, topic to deal with before we go into the priesthood. That is the new covenant. You see, the new covenant is a covenant of priests and kings. And very few people are ready for the radical, you know, deliverance and liberty the new covenant offers. And so what do people normally receive? If you see a hundred ministries today, over 70 are in these two categories I'm going to talk about today. One of them is the Levitical priesthood. Elohim established it. But he established it to be the mediator of the old covenant. You see, every covenant has a priesthood type. And the Old Testament had a priesthood type that the Lord asked Moses to institute. Because the Old Testament was in types and symbols. It was about what happened in the tabernacle of witness, in the will, you know, that these were hard it was outside the camp, so to say, and the camp was all around the tabernacle, rather. The tabernacle was the place Elohim met Israel, and they were, it was built as a house of glory, house of beauty. If you went, if you wanted to contact Elohim, you go into the temple, you go into that tabernacle, and later the temple that Solomon built, brothers and sisters, that old covenant had a people, had a situation where he had a holy God far. They had an unholy people who were far from him. And so there was a need for a priesthood to be moderator between, mediator between the holy God and the unholy people. So he was in effect a step down transformer. Elohim will speak to him, he'll speak to the people. The people will speak to him, he'll take their cause to Elohim. That Old Testament paradigm, as Elohim told Moses, required him to set apart Aaron, his senior brother, and his lineage from the tribe of Levi. The Levites did, they ministered in the things of the Lord, but the priesthood was in the house of Aaron alone. And for Aaron and his sons to be known, there was need to put a robe around them, give them a robe, give them bonnets and, you know, caps and stuff and all that. And when the priest is coming, or the high priest, people can recognize him from afar and give way, respect, honor him. That required the emergence of one, a professional priestly caste called the clergy. Two, massive investment in religiously designed buildings called churches today or temples in the past. Brothers and sisters, so you see today a whole lot of churches are grappling with what the Lord said in Matthew 9, 16. No man put a piece of new cloth into an old garment 
for that which is put in, fillet it up, take it from the garment, the rent is made worse. And neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. So if you want to run the New Testament with Levitical priesthood pattern, where a few people are called out, they are the clergy, they go to spend very many years in the seminary learning Greek and Hebrew and you know all the isms of religion and learning them and then they are now special. They are the people, you bow to them, you call them my Lord, you call them your my grace, you kiss their ring, you bow, you know all those things. You are trying to do the New Testament. Yeshua establishing his blood, the new covenant, with that type of priesthood, is going to be a train wreck. It is not possible. It is an impossibility. And that is why those who are involved in it, with all the things they do to be elevated, to be known, to be apart from the people, they can't eat with the people, they can't, they, they can't stay with the people, they can't, you know, some of, it is terrible. And this is predominant religious expression today. This type of priesthood creates denominations that own the people. The people are owned by the church. The church defines their life, everything around them. They are subjects. There's no liberty in the spirit. And you can't function as a New Testament priest. And this is what Rome gave to the world. Rome did the replacement theology when it was established in the 4th century and to replace the things of Judaism it created the one, a mixture of Christian and uh, Judaistic concepts and put them together in a New Testament, in a, a priesthood rather, that was just like Moses and Aaron in the old super people super anointed Brothers and sisters, the New Testament talks about, I mean, the Old Testament talks about this in Exodus 28 and other scriptures. And it's so important for us to know that there is no contradiction that is worse than Pentecostals and Evangelicals and Charismatics trying to take Old Testament paradigms into the New Testament experience. It's absolute mess. It doesn't hold water. It's not supposed to be. It denies the reality that Yeshua purchased for himself a people. And the people are his people. They are his body. They are his brethren. And if Yeshua did, was not ashamed for us to call him brethren, for him to be our brother, so to say, in, Matthew, in John chapter 20, he told you, Mary Magdalene, go and tell my brethren. And Hebrews talked about you know, Hebrews chapter 2, that he is not ashamed to be called, to call us brethren. So try to create a priesthood that makes some people super anointed, closer to God and others, sinners, laity, on the pew. It is a no-brainer. It's not supposed to be. The second type of priesthood that you find in the Old Testament, not that it is part of the Old Testament, but you find it right there, is the priesthood fashioned after the man called Nimrod. Nimrod in the book of Genesis chapter 10, 8 to 10, this man was a grandson of Noah. Actually a great grandson, because Noah begat Ham, Ham begat Kosh, Kosh begat Nimrod. This man, history has it that he was angry with Elohim for the flood was angry with what happened to his grandfather, Ham. He was super angry. He was a rebel against Elohim. So where Elohim said in Genesis chapter 1, 28, increase, multiply, fill the earth, he inspired the Tower of Babel, where men said, who are you to tell us to increase and you know expand the earth? No, we are going to build a tower to come and see you there. We are going to challenge you there. And that is the same thing governing the mega church movement today. The Lord say increase, multiply, fill the earth. People of God are supposed to be empowered to go forth in his name, to take territory where they are. They say, no, 
Let ten, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands gather around a man. And so only few people are, even know the man. The vast majority are fans of his. That system is based on the principle of Nimrod. Because we are told that he began to be a mighty hunter before the Lord. You think, you think it was animals he was hunting? No. This was the first man that broke the boundary of his habitation as given by Elohim because Elohim gave each family, each group of people a territory. He broke his own. We are told in verse 10 of Genesis 10, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erek and Akkad and Kalne in the land of China. The man broke through, possessed other people, subdued them, not to do the will of he who created them, but his own will. Find it today. The Nimrodic priesthood is one where people are members of a man. Members of a man. The identity is in a man. They, don't, they can't hear from God. They have to hear from the man or the woman. And brothers and sisters, that same principle where Elohim came down in Genesis chapter 11 to see what they were doing and scatter them, that is still what we see today. The Lord will not receive this thing that makes a man a Lord of the flock a lord of the sheep, and they are uh, conquered people. The Shua himself, you know, said he hated this. They are called the Nicolaitans, you know, in the New Testament. The same concept. These are people who say, no, this ministry thing is too simple, too uncomplicated. We mean we, can, we should eat and drink with the brethren? You mean we should regard them as one of as, as us? No. Let's treat them as a conquered people. Leaders are to rule the people. And the result is Yeshua said in Revelation 2, 6, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. In verse 15, So thou hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Who are the Nicolaitans? They said simplicity was out of the way. They didn't need it. They need to be complex. They need to meet a P.A. Be a meet a secretary before you see man of God. You have to book for six months to see a man of God. Yet he's your pastor. You have to, you know, the people are up there, rulers of the people. And they take the Old Testament, I mean the Babylonian things, and bring it in. Yeshua said, no. Matthew chapter 20, 25 to 28. He says, look, the Gentiles, they rule the people. But they shall not be so amongst you. He is the greatest is known by service you serve the people you pour out to them you build them up you enable them to know their god and see him and grow in him and so these two types of priesthood you know i'm just trying to summarize because we started late are outdated they have no place in the assembly of Elohim's people and those bringing them in will answer on the last day of the Lord these two systems Yeshua does not approve of them will not approve of them neither in time nor in eternity he will never approve of the Levitical Aaronic priesthood system or the Nimrodic system where the people are ruled and conquered and, and are bull, you know, bulldozed, their will taken away. If Elohim who created them allows them to have, you know, exercise their will, leaders are not to take away the will of the people. That will lead to control. That will lead to ownership. Brothers and sisters, it is important that we understand that this thing is serious because Matthew 20, 25 to 28, Yeshua said very clearly, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as son of man came not to be ministered unto me to minister, and he gave his life a ransom for many. First Peter 5, 1, the elders which are amongst you are exhort who are most an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Yeshua and a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Yeshua which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither has been lords over Elohim's heritage, but being examples to the flock example in the way you love the Lord radically, in the way you serve him, your prayer life, your evangelism life, 
the commitment, everything you are, how you put him first above yourself, above your family, how he is number one, and how you invest in making sure that those committed to your trust from the family to the brethren, the church, that they know what it means to serve him. Brothers and sisters, it is important that we get this clearly. And this is why the Lord wants to remind us what was said of ministry. Because I say ministry, discover, pursue, fulfill. And the basic synopsis of this course is that everyone who is born again is called to ministry. Every means E-V-E-R-Y. All means A-L-L in capitals. Everyone who is born again is called to ministry. And this course, we're going to discuss it. And we don't want the people to distort it because what is ministry? Ministry, simply put, is the expression of what you're impressed with by the Holy Spirit. We are told in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What is manifestation? The showing up. Every time you serve with your gifts and callings, every time your spiritual gifts come forth, you are serving the Lord and serving his people. And the Lord wants us to know that everybody should discover what part of the body he or she is and use it to serve. And we need to say something. That yesterday the Lord said, look, the principle of teach, train, equip, activate, release is what Yeshua practiced for three and a half years and released the apostles and the other people. And they were 120 in all, not just the apostles. Every single person in the upper room was filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of the Lord, that's what Paul practiced. But then we explained something. We need to emphasize it throughout this course. The fact that you are released to serve doesn't mean you are released to go and do your own stuff. No. If you misunderstand that, it is selfishness and self-centeredness because the Lord is in the business of restoring his body. At the congregational level, at the network level, the Lord is in the business of bringing dry bones together, bone to bone, sinew to sinew, you know, muzzle to muzzle, tissue to tissue, so that the dry bones will come alive as become a mighty army. So when the Lord plants you in a congregation, for instance, he has a specific purpose in planting you there. So when we say the priesthood of all believers, it means that there is a part you alone are fitted by the Lord to give to bring forth, and the others bring forth under the authority of the visionary, under the authority of the pastor, whoever is in charge, everybody taking your part, the body makes increase of itself in love. So the body is strong. When all the spiritual gifts are discovered by the brethren, are excised by the brethren, that is a strong body. Oh, this person escapes the sword of Jehu. Ja, you know, Hazel will slay. The same way in the New Testament church, not everybody has the same gift. Not everybody can heal. Not everybody can deliver. Not everybody can conduct deliverance. Not everybody can prophesy. But we all of us discover our part. The body is complete by what every joy supplies will make increase of ourselves in love. So if, for instance, you are called to be, say, the evangelist or the prophet in a fivefold setting, you discover your own. Then you run off from that setting. You know what you're doing? You are lacerating the body. You've cut off the arm. You cut off the feet to go and run your own inadequate ministry, mono gift ministry. So we need to emphasize this so that people do not mistake these concepts. It is that the Lord is in the business of bringing the fivefold to life. So that the fivefold working together according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10, I mean verse 11 and 12, the fivefold, when they bring their synergistic impact upon the brethren, you know what will happen? The saints are perfected. And being perfected, they know their part in the work. They do the work of the ministry. The body is edified. The body is under stress. So, no one should take the liberty to distort the revelation of what the Lord wants to bring away. Once you have that selfish, self-centered concept, you will not be able to understand what the Lord is saying. 
So brothers and sisters, ministry is not for our pursuit of our agenda. It's not for us to look for money. It's not for our belly. It is for us to come to a place where we find our place in what God is doing and take that place effectively. Close the door. Satan cannot come in through this path, through this path, through that path, and then we begin to build up each other. And if we encounter unbelievers or they encounter us, they see the body in expression. Get that picture inside of you and you are ready for one of the most revolutionary truths you can ever hear that will liberate you from selfishness, of self-centeredness, and bring you into the purpose of the head of the church, Yeshua HaMashiach. And well, tomorrow, we're going to talk about the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, something that Yeshua came to inaugurate on the earth. And the enemy has fought since the fourth century. And by the fourth century, the enemy had taken away the consciousness of this that Yeshua came to do. He came to establish a new order of priesthood that involves everyone who believes on him. Brothers and sisters, this cause, if you understand it, if you practice it, we're going to see the New Testament in high definition. The power of the Lord will begin to flow because the Lord can show up to anybody he pleases him. And often, according to First Corinthians chapter 12, if you read from verse 12 to the end, he often can show up through the most unlikely person. The most unlikely person in the church may be the one with the healing gift. You stay. You do it unpretentiously. You are not seeking glory. You are not seeking attention. And God is looking for simplicity. He's looking for sincerity. He's looking for people whose hearts are burning for him. They want to see the, the body of Yeshua manifested again. We've seen churches. We've seen ABC team churches. Attendance, building cash, which is what the Levitical priesthood and the Nimrodic priesthood is all about. You need to see the manifestation of the body of Yeshua. And that which was said in the book of Mark chapter 16 from verse 15 to 20. Where he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall. They. The drinking identity won't hurt them. They will tread upon some person's scorpions talking about the body. The body. Verse 20 then say, as the Lord went up, they went forth everywhere. Preaching. The Lord walking with them. Signs and wonders following them. There's a short span to the end of the age. Very short span. But the beautiful thing is that in that short span, the Lord wants to bring about the body that Yeshua is the head of. Once that body is in place, how will it come in place? By the teaching ministry. The ministry of the word. Ephesians chapter 5. 26, 27. By the ministry of the word, this pure church is going to manifest in the earth. I want to ask you, do you sense that the Lord is calling you to be part of what he wants to do? Where you are, you are not there for anybody. Wherever the Lord has planted you, bring out your best. Don't withhold anything beyond the authority. Fit into where you are and let there be an expression of Yeshua like never before. Mighty signs and wonders that can happen anywhere and everywhere in the school, the children, in the playground, they're playing basketball, and a child collapses, and a child that knows Elohim right there speaks. You spirit of death, I nullify your hold on this person. I bind you and I cast you to the nearest body of water. I command, let the spirit of life get into this bar and ride you on the pitch. Science and wonder, miracle in the marketplace, in the mall, for we are all carriers of the glory. We are mobile temples of Holy Spirit. Put on your seatbelt and wait to see what the Lord is going to do with us. But whoever Simon, please explain the Levitical priesthood pattern and why it's no longer permissible in the new covenant. And two, explain the priesthood themed after Nimrod. Why it is not permissible in the kingdom? Let's pray. Please share the video. Get other people involved. And please, these videos, the Lord wants to use it to do something in us. Get ready. Open your heart. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to share your word. 
Lord, we pray that your word will produce fruit. 